2020, the year no one had planned for. Mysterious pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan, China. A new type of coronavirus. The number of affected countries has tripled. The World Health Organization has just declared that this is a pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic swept the world, reaching all corners of our lives. Cycling was not exempt. Normal life stood still as public health became a priority. For me personally, this meant no racing and travel. Quite a big change in pace. The main thing was that I had nothing to complain about. I was at home and had a responsibility to do my part and stop the spread and look after the people around me. I was able to tick off some productive goals, however, and came into autumn and the approach of the CX season in great form. I headed to Belgium eager to resume some normality and to put use to the hard work that I'd done in the summer. I quickly realised that the season would be far from normal. Covid tests, strict protocols and no fans at the races. But we did our best and made the racing work. And the legs showed up too. I had a strong ride at Koppenberg and then went on to get a podium at Europeans. On a high from this, I had another few solid races before I hit the main hurdle of 2020 and 2021 season. Civ Prestige Merckx Plus. The race did not start well. Not long into the sand, I hit some bumps and was sent forward on my saddle. My front wheel dug into the sand and I flipped over the bars and straight onto my left shoulder. It happened so quickly I didn't even have time to put my arms out. My body folded on impact and immediately I felt my collarbone give way and snap. F I lay in the sand in a heap and I heard other riders dismount and run around me. It then went quiet. I rolled over and picked myself up and instantly I could feel my left shoulder was totally done. I climbed over the barrier and was met by Kurt of Trinity who took my bike. I told him my collarbone was broken. He then felt my shoulder and the sharp bone and his face told me the story. Medical tent, skin suit cut off, injection of painkillers then in the ambulance and off to Turnhout Hospital. Signed in through triage, x-ray, hospital gown then Covid test. Chat with the doctor, then straight into surgery. Forgot where I was when I woke up, but I came around and I didn't have too much pain. Slept okay that night, even though I was woken every few hours to be checked on. Pain levels all okay, and I check up with the doctor, and I was good to go back to the breakaway house. The next day was rough. Rough from the meds and surgery, then the realization of my actual situation. Everything on race day had happened very quickly. Crash, hospital, surgery, sleep. So the first time I really had time to process it all was the next day. I took a walk to try and get my head straight and work out how to get back to where I needed. So it's day two after my crash. So yesterday I got back from the hospital and back to the team house. Yeah, that was the most fun. Just kind of, it all happened very quickly so I didn't feel like I got much time to really process everything that was going on so spent this morning kind of thinking through the steps and what's actually going to be my reality for the next few weeks. I now needed to make a plan to come back strong. The first thing I told myself was that I'd be stronger than ever and ready for the world championships at the end of January. That was my goal and everything in between would be to be at my best for that one day. I flew home a few days after my surgery to spend 10 days in Scotland. I'm happy I decided to do this. It gave me some space from the racing and allowed me to reset a bit mentally as well as letting my collarbone begin the healing. I did some indoor sessions, but nothing too crazy, just to keep me busy and moving. Yo, it's day 10 after my surgery. I've got my Zwift set up. So yeah, just riding a little bit every day basically. Shoulder's been improving these last few days. I'm got it supported at the moment, feeling a little bit less tired every day, which is which is positive. And yeah, and the actual shoulder itself is a lot less uncomfortable. Still, I'm trying not to put too much weight through it. The body still felt rough, but most days I could feel improvement in the shoulder. I then flew home to have a checkup with the Belgian surgeon who fixed my shoulder. We discussed the risk of coming back to racing too early while the bone was still healing, so I decided to miss the Christmas period of racing. Instead, I went to Drona to put in a big block of training and regain my level again.
time out here and Drona has been awesome. Yeah, on to the next thing now. Drona was really good. My motivation was high and I think it's probably some of the best quality training and riding I've done. Three weeks of work went by quickly and I headed back to Belgium with a good feeling. I did the mandatory seven day quarantine and tests, then turned up at the first race in Mall, ready to race again. This was a tough day. Mall is already a really tough sand track, but my head was totally not in the game. Straight away from the start with riders banging into me and the fighting for positions and the stress of the first lap, I felt out of my comfort zone. I just crumbled a bit and didn't have any of the race spark to push and take risks. I guess this was just from being out of practice, but this race did not help with my confidence on the bike and the fear of crashing. I refocused though, ready for a double weekend of Hammer and Overraiser. Hammer was average at best. I did some good racing, but I still felt I was building that race speed back up and all the little things still needed to be put back together. But in my head, I knew Overriser next day would be an opportunity for me to show myself. Overriser is one of the hardest courses. Lots of elevation per lap and tough technical climbs and descents. Last year, I had a really good ride in the elites, so I was ready to show my skills again. Composed and ready to go on the line, Lights go green, power through the bells, up to speed, then bam, I'm on the tarmac with bikes and bodies above me. I fell right on my front and was worried about my collarbone, but as I rolled over, the pain was coming from my knees, not my shoulder. I went to stand up and both my knees were already swollen and stiff. Back in the camper, I thought of how shit this prep was for worlds. Six days out from the race and I'm sitting with two bang knees, lost skin and another DNF. I spent the next days getting treatment, trying to continue training and resting the knees ready for Worlds, but those things don't go together and I was starting to realise Worlds might not be possible. I'll be honest, that week was one of the hardest times I've been through. In a normal season, I would have done 20 or 30 races or so, had ups and downs, but would have come into Worlds week with a lot of races and results in the bag. But due to Covid, reducing U23 races a bit, then the main event of breaking my collarbone, I felt I hadn't really proved myself, and that made not being able to start Worlds even more tough. From the moment I crashed in Merck's Plus, I already had in my mind that I would be 100% come to Worlds, no matter what. I woke up every day and trained as hard as I could, with the goal of being at my best for that day. So when it crumbled in the last six days before my goal, it hit a lot harder than it normally would have. This cyclocross season has taught me a lot, often painful lessons, but also installed confidence in my ability and strength to come back from setbacks. There will be more of them to come, no doubt, but I'll be more prepared than ever to face them. I'll keep pushing.